My name is uh, Ryan Zimmerman, Director of Business Development at VKS, and this is my colleague uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Sales and Marketing Manager. So we'll be looking to discuss a few different things today. Uh, specifically, we'd like to first introduce you to our company, who we are, where we come from, and uh, what our software solution actually does. And then from there, we'd like to pass over into this topic of Industry 4.0 and the connected worker, and discuss a little bit what that evolution looks like. So to start off, something that's pretty interesting about our company is actually where we come from. So our software was actually originally developed by a manufacturing company based out of Montreal, Canada. And this organization was a high mix, low volume manufacturing company, about 300 employees. And it was quite a diverse environment. They did everything from fabrication to machining, assembly, welding. So really quite vertically integrated. And what they saw was that they built products in quite a few different industries. So it could have ranged from transportation, such as rail and aerospace, all the way to medical products. And they also had quite a few different products that really had, you know, just general piece parts that would go inside of a box and didn't really need to have too many uh, high detailed quality requirements. So this was a very diverse environment that they were operating within. And one of the things that they found was that they had a really hard time with standardization. So they would actually have these jobs coming through. Some jobs would come through once every week, others every six months, and others maybe only once a year. So it was very difficult for the operators to actually be successful within their tasks and to ensure that they were achieving ideal productivity levels. So that's when this company actually had the idea to first create the VKS software solution. They originally did some research on the market about eight years ago and there really wasn't too many tools out there to create and share visual work instructions. So they developed VKS and implemented it within their own facility, which they actually had a second one as well in Binghamton, New York. And what they saw was really quite outstanding results. So on average, they had about a 20% increase in productivity across the shop after implementing the solution. And then they even achieved a 95% reduction in defects in a few select work centers. So really this was again quite outstanding. And at that point the decision was made to actually commercialize VKS and offer it out to different companies across North America. So since then we've, uh, we've been around ourselves for about four years now, a completely separate company. And it's been a very exciting journey. And one of the things that helps to set us apart is the focus on the human aspect to manufacturing. So from here, I'd like to uh, pass the mic to my colleague, uh, Kyle, here. And he'll actually be able to explain what the VKS software is and what it actually does. Thank you, Ryan. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how the actual software works, the bare bones, uh, if you will. So there's three modules of VKS. First one being VKS Lite. So VKS Lite, the focus is work instructions. Um, training material, maintenance procedures, setup sheets, control plans, really any type of documentation that you'd want to standardize and have somebody follow in a step-by-step -step format, that's what VKS Lite is about. So you're going to use our software to create these processes using images, videos. So there's a built-in editor mode that allows you to import your images, import your videos, add annotations, write your text on top. We are multilingual, um, so there's Google Translate built in. And you're going to create these operations and, and procedures within VKS, and then you're also going to use the software to view them. Right? So it's, there's full revision control, there's history, there's change management. The operators are always following the most recent version of the work instructions. And it's something from an operator's point of view that's very simple and easy to do. And that's, I think, one of the biggest benefits that we got from actually coming from a manufacturing company is we know firsthand um, how simple and easy that something like this needed to be for a shop floor operator to use and, and have uh, as a daily tool. So it's very intuitive. Um, it can be used and accessed from anything that has a browser, so tablets, iPads, com computers. Um, and, and that's really the core foundation of VKS is VKS Lite. Next is, is VKS Pro. Um, so whereas VKS Lite focuses more on going digital and paperless with your work instructions, VKS Pro focuses on data collection. It focuses on going digital with your checklists. So we have um, digital forms that can be built directly into your processes to prompt the operator at specific times for their inspections. This could be something as simple as confirm uh, an, uh, an item, or it could be scan a serial number, take a dimension, whatever it may be. And so we're collecting this data live out on the shop floor. We're also 
um, monitoring operator productivity and efficiency. So we can track his time, units completed, how long he's taken versus the standard time, and we can get efficiency markers based off of that. And all the data that we are collecting, both from a quali quality and productivity point of view, are being stored in our reporting KPI section. So there's a managerial dashboard as well um, where you can go in and view all of the data that's being collected. The last uh, module of VKS is VKS Enterprise. And VKS Enterprise is really, um, it's where we start to talk about Industry 4.0. And VKS Enterprise focuses on integration. So as soon as you start talking about connecting with other systems, other devices, this is where we get into the enterprise package. So with VKS, you can connect to ERP systems, quality management systems, MES systems, really any type of software that you'd want to be pushing and pulling data back and forth from, we can connect with that. Um, you can also export to have custom reports outside of VKS if you want to run summaries or macros in Excel. Um, and then we also have the ability to integrate with tools and machines as well. So we have a VKS add-on called VKS Tool Connect, which is allows you to connect the software with your tools. So whether it be assembly tools, torque wrenches, rivet guns, um, hardware insertion machines, machining centers, really any type of tool or machine that you'd be able to find in a manufacturing plant nowadays that can send an output signal, we can connect with that and actually advance the work instructions based off of the signal of the tool. So the worker and the instructions are staying in sync simply by him doing his job. We also just recently released Tool Connect IoT. The difference being, not only is the work instructions advancing, but we're actually collecting the torque value of each and every single screw that's being inputted into the pro uh, product as well. So what you're getting is full traceability on all of the consumables that are going into the product as well. So as you can see, when we talk about the three different um, uh, modules that we offer, uh, VKS can be used as an add-on to an existing MES system um, for simple work instructions, more efficient and easier way of managing them, or it can be used to the extent of almost a full MES system itself. And that's really when we start to talk about connecting, um, connecting the factory to all the data and we to, uh, start to talk about Industry 4.0. So as we start to talk a little bit more about Industry 4.0, I'll pass it back to Ryan um, to talk a little bit further about that. Thanks, Kyle. So uh, speaking about Industry 4.0, I'm sure there's quite a few of you here who are familiar with the topic. Maybe some others that are a little, you know, getting uh, more used to it initially. So Industry 4.0 really revolves around the management and analysis of big data. You've got connected machines and robots and robotics, and really the factory is just in synchronization. So really taking advantage of the Internet of Things and the latest technologies and this is something very exciting that's happening within manufacturing. It's really opening quite a few opportunities for different manufacturing organizations to improve in many ways and to have real-time data and insight within their operations. Now, something that actually comes up is kind of interesting is where do people actually fit in within Industry 4.0? So you've got operators on the shop floor today, and some people may think, you know, what is next for the actual human operator within the factory? So naturally, some people are probably a little nervous that robots may actually come out and start to steal their jobs or take them away in the near future. And this is something that uh, you know, we are seeing the beginning of. We do see some robotic companions that are coming out now within different manufacturing organizations. But the reality is, is anything like that is still quite a ways away to see really spread across the whole industry. So what's actually coming with Industry 4.0 is that the operator is now becoming connected to the factory. They have all of the information they need at their fingertips to be effective for them to actually perform their job. And this is one of the really neat elements of what the industry, the fourth industrial revolution is bringing. Now, when we speak again about you know, operators within the manufacturing environment and new technologies and all of that, a lot of people naturally kind of shift their minds towards thinking of advanced machinery and getting faster, smarter machines and connecting to them and monitoring the data. And this is all very exciting, very valuable initiatives that can be performed. But what some people actually tend to forget is how integrated the operator still is within this process. So if you think of a machining center as an example, 
you do still have operators setting up the machines in some instances, performing in-process inspections, final inspections, packaging the parts, and then of course you still have all of the manual operations that are being performed within the factory ranging from stacking the parts onto a pallet to packaging, assembling it, and so on. So really what's something that's very interesting with the new revolution is this man-machine collaboration. If you want your machines to be able to achieve the objectives, you need to have the operators being able to work alongside them in an effective manner. And that's again really one of the things that this, these new technologies are allowing companies to do is to have the operator connected and for them to have real-time information to ensure that the machine could actually achieve what it's designed to do. Now when we speak again about what a connected operator may need, there's a couple different types of materials that are commonly used. You've got work instructions which may range from setup sheets to again detailed step-by-step -step procedures, drawings and so on. And you've got quality checklists telling the operator what they need to inspect, where they need to inspect, uh, what the tolerances are and so on. So this type of documentation has actually been around for quite some time now. But typically it's been in a paper-based format. So the average company today still does have a lot of paper documentation across their shop. And some are you know, already past this point and they've gone digital, others are starting the journey. But what happens with paper documentation is that there's quite a few drawbacks to using it. So generally speaking, when you have work instructions, if you have a revision change, you've got someone who now has to update that procedure, print it out, put it into a binder, get rid of the old one. And then you've got the operators on the shop floor who aren't necessarily actually looking at these materials. So they're sitting at their desk and, or standing, and they have this binder beside them, but it's got small text, there's many pictures beside it, so it's actually quite difficult for them to understand what they need to do. So there's quite a few you know, small little things that have created this environment where work instructions, as an example, tend to be a burden to a company. The people creating them find it a headache, the operators don't want to use it, and really, when you think about going paperless, it eliminates a lot of these issues immediately. So what the revolution is also helping to bring is this essence of transitioning to a smart paperless factory and being able to have the operators informed at all times and really kind of changing something that's become a burden back to being an advantage. Similar, you know, it's not that different than a GPS system as an example. We all have GPS's on our phone and we find it very valuable. When you want to drive somewhere, you're able to pull up a map and get there. Well, that's similar to what this type of documentation is supposed to bring for the manufacturing environment to guide the operator to ensure that they could be as productive as they need to be. So when we speak about implementing 4.0, there's a lot of different ways that companies can go. Again, you know, as mentioning earlier, you've got new advanced machinery, you've got different software solutions such as OEE machine monitoring softwares and MES systems. So for a lot of people who are starting to look this direction, it really can seem as a mountain. You know, you're looking at it and think, you know, how do I go from here to there? Maybe it's, maybe it's too big, maybe there's no point in doing it. But really it shouldn't be perceived this way and you kind of have to break it down to smaller hills and smaller improvements to get, begin your journey. So definitely some important uh, elements to think about is, you know, again, where to begin. Some ways you may identify this is through low productivity levels, areas with high rejects or lack of standardization or traceability requirements. So to be able to zero in on some of your pain points and then identify solutions to improve them. So this is kind of a great methodology to follow and following a plan, do, check, act mentality. So you implement, you monitor and you improve. And it doesn't just begin and stop there. Continuous improvement is always an ongoing evolution and just like implementing lean manufacturing or other initiatives, there's lots of opportunity there and you just have to go about it in a step-by-step -step approach to ensure success. Now what we'd like to do is to actually paint a bit of a picture as to what we recommend companies to do if they're looking to transition to a smart paperless factory. So I'll pass the mic over to uh, Kyle here to again explain the steps that we would recommend. Yeah, thanks Ryan. So as Ryan was talking about, we want to really break it down into steps to make that mountain something that is very achievable for companies. So again, our recommendation to transitioning to a paper, uh, paperless uh, uh, company is, is quite simple. First thing that you want to do is go paperless. 
So all your current documentation, your, your work instructions, your drawings, um, engineering models, get them out of paper format, get them in a system. Right away by doing this, you're going to see immediate benefits based off of all the things that Ryan was just referring to. The next thing that you want to do is we want to go visual with the work instructions. Now that it's in a system, let's take advantage of that. Let's add pictures. Let's add video. We want to show the operator how to actually do the job. It's that old saying, right? A, a picture says a thousand words. And it's never been more true, specifically in manufacturing. Um, a lot of times I'm talking to companies and they have um, some examples there. They're telling me some of my operators do something in four minutes. Other operators do it in six minutes. Um, in high mix, low vol volume environments especially, you, you have a lot of the times 10 different operators doing the exact same job 10 different ways. So the whole concept here is we want to standardize on the best process, show that one method using images or video and then bring everybody to that level. Right? So eventually everyone will be doing the job the exact same way. Um, step three, go digital with your quality checks. Right? So instead of having the digital work instructions and doing my inspections still on paper, bring them and incorporate them into your processes. So now, as I'm going through my work instructions, I'm getting prompted with my inspections at the appropriate time. I can't continue until my inspections are done, so we're ensuring that the inspections are done on time and that everything is within tolerance. The next thing that you want to do is start monitoring productivity. Right? So within our software, you're able to track efficiency, you're able to track time, and we're able to see if the operators are falling off track. You can even send an email as soon as somebody falls off a certain percentage of their efficiency. So rather than wait to the end of the job to find out that somebody was two hours over their standard time, you can take action right away when you know that they're not going to be meeting it. Step five, you'll see here, is really, uh, this, is, this is a fully loaded um, Industry 4.0 cell. So this is incorporating all the steps that I just mentioned. And it's also taking it a step further and having Tool Connect involved. So as you can see here, this operator is working. He's got his work instructions right in front of him, best standardized process, showing him how to do his job. He's got his productivity monitoring happening, so he's knowing if he's on time, how many units he's done. He has his quality checks built directly into the work instructions. So as he's doing his job, they're going to be prompting him for him to do his inspections at the appropriate times. And he's connected with his tools and machines. So the work instructions are constantly staying in sync with him. It's capturing the torque values of each and every single screw that's inserted. And what you're left with is full 100% traceability on absolutely all aspects of the manufacturing process. Right from the operator and who did it, when, how many, how long, to all these inspections that were done, that they were done with intolerance and on time, and to all of the components that are getting put into the part from the capturing of the torque values. So this is really the full essence of an industry 4.0 type of cell. Um, this is more of a manual environment um, example. And then this is more of an automated example. Right? So the same, same concept applies. We're taking all the same um, aspects as the previous example, except this is a machining example. So instead of same concept, you have your work instructions, your, maybe your setup sheets. Um, the operator's connected with the machine and VKS. So he's getting prompted again for his inspections at the appropriate times. And um, he's showing him his setup, his maintenance on the on the uh, tools, and also we can connect directly with the machine. So if a tool breaks, an email can get sent to maintenance showing them which tool broke on which machine and everything is automated. The maintenance can come down and change the tool. Um, we can have machine monitoring going on. So managers have OEE showing them their uptime and downtime of the machines. And again, everything that the operator needs to be as efficient as possible is at their fingertips. So we're providing them with all the tools that they need to be as successful as possible. So I'll pass it back to Ryan just to, uh, to wrap up on the presentation. Thank you, Kyle. So as you could see, hopefully throughout the presentation, uh, again, you know, many different benefits to transitioning towards a smart factory. Some of those may range from, again, reduced defects, a major element to, you know, what companies are trying to achieve. And then you've got increased productivity, again, by standardizing on best processes, by monitoring data, companies can implement clear strategies to ensure that they're as productive as possible. Now, some other elements are standardization, again. So very, very often companies, as Kyle were mentioning, they have operators doing things in many different ways on the same product. 
And this can very often tick off the end customer who one day they get a box packaged in one method and then the next day in a different one. So these are the types of issues that you're starting to be able to resolve. And in addition to all this, high levels of traceability and accountability. Again, with all these technologies that are available to companies, they're able to guarantee that they have 100% visibility into their operations, who did what, how long they took, what products they built, and if they need to, even tracking data down to the unique serial number and all the subcomponents so that they could always guarantee that they have the relevant data uh, for their end customers. So all in all, very exciting times uh, as to what can be done with new technology to, no, technologies today. And some of you may be wondering, you know, what's next? So two elements that uh, we've identified that are really starting to appear now and we believe that we'll see a lot more of it over the next five years. One is again robotic companions, so we su should see more and more of these entering the marketplace and assisting operators in manual jobs. And the second one is augmented reality. So again, we've all seen a lot of that the past couple years with you know, the launch of that Pokemon Go app a couple years ago to newer solutions available. And we're even starting to see companies such as Airbus and Boeing beginning to adopt these solutions where they'll actually have smart glasses on the operators showing them detailed information and work instructions in real time projecting right in front of them. And this is something that you know, seems a little far-fetched. We've seen it in movies for years, but the reality is, is that the technology is advancing very, very rapidly. You've got companies such as Microsoft and Apple and uh, many others who are promoting it. So this is something that we believe over the next five years we'll start to see being a lot more accessible for the average company to have within their operations and not just the larger you know, Fortune 500 organizations. So uh, that's pretty well it for our presentation today. Hopefully it was uh, very educational for everyone. If you did want to ever learn more about our software solution, we do have uh, our booth at 635, so just behind us over here if you wanted any live demonstrations of the software. And otherwise, uh, does anyone have any questions today? So hopefully it was clear then. <laughs> Go ahead. Yep, so uh, the question was, is it one software or a series of modules? And the answer is actually that it, it is one software, but it's broken into separate modules. So companies are able to pick and choose the elements that are relevant to them. As an example, an organization who already has a manufacturing execution system installed, um, very often these companies may still have issues with their work instructions because very often it's simply just the ability to attach a Word file as an example. So they may actually use the VKS solution just for the work instruction component integrated within that MES software. So it is designed to be very scalable for a company who you know, as a small medium organization and they don't necessarily have the funds to be able to purchase a large MES system or their operations are too diverse, they're able to take advantage of VKS at a low cost to be able to have those benefits or if they're already pretty uh, deep in and have quite a few advanced software solutions, they may again just take advantage of a few of these components such as the work instructions or the checklists or uh, the ability to connect with machines and tools as an example. Good. Well, I think uh, that's it. Thank you, everyone, for your time today, and uh, have a nice day. <laughs>